What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I am joined again by Ricky and we're going to be taking a look at the awesome Gen 2 half track. This is a uh, this is actually an exclusive from USA Made Blade. The Spanto Blade, believe it or not, is exclusive to USA Made Blade. So uh, this is the half track with the brand new triway pivot system. And you know what I just realized is I think I actually am I think I'm the first one to make a video about this other than the gentleman who um, did the, uh, the, the the guy who runs USA Made Blade, Scott Whittington. I think he did the video on like, hey, I've got these, but there hasn't been an actual oh, review really? on these yet. Yeah. So I think, I, I think I'm the first one to review the, um, the triway system in the half uh, track. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And um, it's great because I absolutely love this knife. In fact, I love it so much that I'm, <laughs> it's, this knife is actually, um, changing my view on what my range or what my preferred range is to carry in terms of size. Uh, because previously you've heard me say a million times on a video on videos that like my sweet spot is seven and three quarters to eight and a quarter. And that I make exceptions sometimes, you know, the paramilitary, th I'm sorry, the para three being the shortest knife that I was like, Oh, I love this. And it's outside of my range, you know, on the small side, this guy is even smaller quite a bit, actually comes in at six and a half inches overall. This knife is amazing for a million reasons. Let's do the size comparison with okay. the XM18 because I want to talk, I watched some other videos of people talking about the half track and they showed it with the XM18, but Let's they did a few. Closed. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a closed XM18 and an open half track. So you can see there, uh, this is a little knife. This is a little knife this way. We're going to get to um, where it is big. This is a, an XM18 three and a half inch that has been upgraded. You, if you saw my video, you know you, you recognize this knife. It's got, been upgraded with a tie scale, and this is the uh, DLT Trading uh, exclusive uh, No Choil Spanto in M390. So the XM18. Let's try and get these butt to butt here, so that we get an accurate view. The XM18 is eight and an, uh, a quarter inches overall, with a three and a half inch blade and cutting edge. The uh, half track is 6.5 inches overall with a, gosh, it's like a 2.5 inch cutting edge on a three inch blade is essentially <laughs> what you're in. Or it's like a 2.85 inch blade, yeah. which makes it extremely legal in many places. And that's what's really cool. Now, here's what's awesome about this. Let's, if you would turn that one up and I'll turn this one up so that we can use two hands. Um, let's, let's actually do like this. The thickness of these guys is actually extremely similar. Now, looking at this, you're going to say, ah, well, you know, the, uh, the XM18 is still thicker, but actually if we're going to turn the butt of it, uh, towards this way, if we're going to compare the titanium on the thickest part of the half track to, um, one of the titanium slabs on the XM18, you'll see that they're actually using the same thickness of titanium. Now this one has a titanium aftermarket scale on it, but you'll know that normally it's got the G10 scale and the, uh, liner underneath. The liner on this guy is substantially thicker than the liner that they use on the standard XM18. So in terms of how much titanium is coming on this guy's standard, it's actually quite a bit. I mean, this is, this thing is very overbuilt for such a small knife. I think I'm good with that one there. Um, thank you, Ricky. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so they come, you know, this is the standard version. There's an upgraded version. They come with the, uh, G10 scale and then a very thick, um, titanium liner and then a, a, um, equally thick <clears throat> as the XM18 lockside titanium, um, titanium lockside. Uh, and then you've got a 0.16 stock thickness blade. So just just a hair thinner than the XM18. The XM18 is 0.165. Um, so this is a very substantially overbuilt little knife. And I love that. My biggest problem with little knives is that the shorter you get, the, the more they feel kind of frail. And, and you know, I'm not doing anything, any crazy hard use with my knives. I'm doing uh, things like opening letters, opening boxes, opening packages. But I don't I don't like the idea of like, man, if I really was in a, a crappy situation where I had to use this, this other little knife hard, would it be able to stand up to it? The nice thing about the half trek is, is it is built like a tank, but it's little, which means it's really, really easy to carry. It weighs 4.2 ounces, by the way, which is 
on the heavier side for such a little knife, but um, overall, I mean, in terms of the footprint in your pocket, this little tiny thing, I mean, this is all the more room it takes up in your hand. Here, I'll let, we'll back up and let Ricky hold it. Um, it's a little knife, but it's built substantially, and it's really, it's a joy to hold, and it's, it's such a bizarre feeling. <laughs> it really is. Because we haven't talked about this yet, but let's zoom up on the half-track symbol on the other side of the flipper. This symbol right here, if you're not familiar with uh, Rick Hinderer knives, is the triway symbol, which um, which indicates the new pivot system. The the pivot in this knife will accept nylon washers, phosphor bronze washers, or bearings, uh, of which it it comes with. It comes with all three of those, so you can change them out wherever you whenever you want. So what do you um, have in there right now? Bearings. Okay. And it, it will come with bearings, uh, as is evident by that action there. Um, you know, the reason for that is so that uh, people who are like, well, I paid $425 for this knife. I don't want nylon washers. Well, change it to bearings or change it to phosphor bronze. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to work in a dusty environment. Then, you know, take the bearings out and change it to phosphor bronze or change it to nylon. You know, well, I like the action. Change it to, to bearings. You can have what you want. You know, there's no more uh, reason to complain there about the uh, pivot system and what it can or can't withstand or, or the action isn't up to par. You know, it, it's uh, let's talk about the action, actually. The detent on these guys, I would say uh, it's it feels like a ZT, right? The flipping action, that. it feels like a ZT, but it's a little heavier than... And a little smoother, in my yes, opinion. Yes, a little bit smoother. Um, it is going to fire. It is going to fire hard. Uh, it's going to lock out solid, and it's extremely satisfying. Now, when I said that it has an odd feeling to it, it's because with a small knife, uh, oftentimes what you get is a light detent because uh, you also have the option to use some sort of thumb stud deploy deployment method, which this knife does not have. So they have to keep the detent light enough uh, to be able to do both things. And just with a smaller knife generally comes less spring tension on the lock side, maybe a, I don't know, maybe a smaller detent ball. There's, there's a lot of things contributing to the detent not being super tough, which uh, unfortunately, what ends up happening with a small flipper tab is you end up having like a half deployment and you kind of have to, and, and people have just come to expect that on little knives. Um, also, generally on smaller knives, you have a thinner blade, um, which makes the overall weight of the blade less. And therefore, you don't have this massive force um, coordinating with the detent, the flipper tab to sling that blade into position. This knife is light and small, but it does have a heavy detent, and it does have a fairly thick blade, uh, so it rockets out, and you're not expecting it. The very first time that Ricky flipped this, he was like, that's really confusing. Yeah, it just it doesn't make any sense because it's such a small knife, but the action is so satisfying. Yep. I don't think I've misfired it yet. I don't know how you could. I think, yeah, I mean, it's just going to. I mean, I think you honestly have to get your finger in front of it to and stop it i mean it's watch this how many little knives do you know of that will shake shut like that this is brand new guys i got this yesterday and you can literally wiggle this thing shut i mean that's that's how and here's here's what i like a lot of times with knives the thing that bothers me is if i want to do this with one hand you disengage push so that that tab catches your finger and then you want to be past that detent ball so that you can go ahead and close it right. like this. Uh, and a lot of times the detent ball is not in the right place because of where it's positioned on the blade or where the lock, you know, the overall uh, uh, design of the knife doesn't allow that for that to be the case, but it is perfect on this knife. I'm trying to get it to where it shuts like um, all in one fluid motion, but it's, it's bizarre because my hand is not used to it. But you can do that on this knife where you fire it open and then kick it shut with one finger. And it's just, it's such a good feeling. I love this thing so much. I'm so pumped about this because it's, it was kind of a risk. You know, you're, these are $425 and you know, if somebody wants to know, uh, what I think about the justifications for that kind of money, listen, I'm not going to talk about that. Rick Hinder and Knives, um, they build a premium product. Uh, they build uh, their knives all uh, in-house in the United States. Um, their fit and finish is, is, in my opinion, perfect. The action is incredible. They use uh, top quality materials, including grade 5 titanium and CPM 20 CV, and everything just looks beautiful. Um, for me, I can justify it, $425 for a hinder because I love Rick Hinder. And if you can't, that's totally fine. No judgment there. Um, but uh, that's what they cost, and that's that's probably what they're going to continue to cost. Um, 
But uh, anyways, um, I just, I absolutely love it. And I took a risk on it because I was like, that's a lot of money. Am I really going to like that knife? You know, for example, I'm not interested in the Jurassic through Rick Hinder. I'm just not. It's not, it's not a knife that I'm, that I find aesthetically pleasing. I don't have any interest in owning one. I'm sure that some people love it. But with this, I was interested in the design. I like the idea of a little knife that, that was built like a tank. And I just, I was like, oh man, I hope I like it. And it came in and I was like, this is so <laughs> cool. So um, I'm really happy. You know, we haven't really said, you know, given credit to USA Made Blade for releasing the first run of these uh, because they worked directly, or Scott Whittington worked directly with Rick Hinder uh, to bring this to life for the first. Uh, and this is not, you don't call this Gen 6. The XM18 is on its sixth generation, but the half track, if you remember, is only on its second generation. The first generation was this with. Um, with uh, just the regular pivot system, which is nylon, and no steel lock bar insert. Uh, so this has the three different pivot systems available. Um, the um, uh, the Spanto blade shape, which is unique to this generation through USA Made Blade, and the steel lock bar insert, which is awesome. We haven't talked about that yet. Rick Hinderer knives have two uh, lock bar stabilizers. They have the traditional lock bar stabilizing disc, and then the um, the steel lock bar insert actually lips over the titanium frame, which is common on uh, a lot of knives that use um, lock bar inserts. They double as a, a uh, frame stop uh, or over travel stop. So this one actually has the insert and the disc acting as two separate stops for that. Um, so that's really cool. Another amazing thing, another thing that I love is that this little groove in here that um, some, you know, some people will look at and go, oh, that's a blood fuller. Um, really, I think what that is, if you could demonstrate, it's an, a way to open the knife with two hands so that you don't have to fire it out like a maniac. Um, <laughs> just if you're in case in a, you are in a family situation or exactly. maybe a business situation. When I, we, we have, uh, we have holidays over at, uh, or some of part, part of each holiday over at my mother-in-law's house. And, uh, she's a, a little bit skeptical of about a lot of the big scary horrible knives that i carry when you know during christmas and and so is they're like oh you know uh uh who's got a who's got a knife and i i whip out a giant you know folding battle axe you know and nobody everybody's a little bit like Ugh. <laughs> so with this it'll be a little easier christmas day when we go over there to open presents to uh open this up two-handed this little tiny thing um and uh, not not scare everybody. So that's that's a huge benefit. I love that. I also love that this knife uses modular hinderer parts. As the, is the same thing with all hinderer knives. You know, um, some of the parts aren't going to be modular, um, but you've got the uh, the standard um, pivot, which is the same pivot you'll find on pretty much every single hinder knife. I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, these, uh, these screws back here are actually not modular with the XM18, though they do look like the XM18 handle screw. I, I'm told they're a different size. Standoffs also, same thing. They're, they're not exactly the same size. The pocket clip, though, is modular, and the uh, lock bar stabilizer is modular. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can um, pull off these scales pretty easily with these two screws here and replace them. Uh, you know, you can, change, you can make the scale whatever color you want. And they are readily available right now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing that I really like these, um, stone washed versions of the half track actually have a unique stone washing that is different from the traditional stone washing you see on the XM18. If you still have that and want yeah. to get it out, we'll use it as an example. Uh, the stone washing on the frame is actually traditional hinderer stone washing. So if we flip that over here, you can see that the two frames will match. They're the exact same type of stone washing. When we get to the blade, this has got a fine uh, reflective stone wash where you can actually see some of the little uh, grains in there. Uh, well, it looks like grains. Whereas the half track actually has more of a matte um, satin finished stone wash, and it's really, really appealing. In fact, I don't know if Rick uh, will watch this video. I really doubt it. Uh, he's, he seems like he's probably a pretty busy guy. Um, but, you know, may, I don't know. Maybe if Scott watches this video. I would like to see this finish on um, his other knives. In fact, I, I would be very interested in an XM18 with that exact finish. Um, also, please bring back anthracite. That is like the coolest thing ever. Um, but anyways, um, so this has got a, a kind of a cool finish on it that you don't see on any of his other knives. Here, I'll give you that one back. Um, 
But uh, so that's really, really cool. The other thing that's really cool, the one actually initially this was a disappointment because I was like, oh no, where are the bracing lugs that like make hinders, you know, they, right. this really hard, you know, heavy duty knife. Initially I thought, oh, there's no bracing lugs. That makes sense. It's a smaller knife, you know, maybe all the strength is just going to come from the blade shape. Actually, if we look in here, there are grooves milled out on the inside. And what those grooves are there for is to accommodate for the internal stop pin, which is attached to the blade. They're little cylinders, which are exactly the same thing as the uh, locking lugs that you would find on the XM18 or ZTO562. They're just internal. They ride on those grooves around the pivot in this shape, and then they act as the stop pin on both sides of the blade in the locking position uh, and in the um, closed position. You'll find that there's no stop pin back here. So you actually still have that same bracing system um, where it, you know, obviously I'm not going to recommend doing a bunch of pry jobs of the knife, but if you had to, um, if you didn't have those, uh, those, uh, locking lugs back there, then all of the stress would go directly to the pivot. Um, this helps disperse some of that stress when you can, um, when, when these lugs brace on either side of the frame, obviously it's still not going to be as strong as a pry bar or any tool that is actually designed for prying, but it does allow this knife um, some added strength and rigidity in a very hard use situation. So I was really pleased that they still did that. Um, and it, it of course rides smooth, um, uh, despite that being a second thing in there for, for friction, I guess. There's no friction involved in the locking lugs is what I'm trying to say. I only have one gripe about this entire knife. What's that? The, this is, it's funny actually. They actually have four different heads. Uh, if you want to take this apart, you need four different heads <laughs> to take it apart. You need, well, actually five because this is uh, a semi-proprietary system still. So, you know, there's still going to be people going you know, I'll never buy a hinder because they use a proprietary pivot system and you have to buy the tool. You don't have to buy the tool. You can cut a notch in a penny, guys. It'll set you back one cent. In fact, I think I said that exact thing in a comment one time. Anyways, you need some sort of flathead screwdriver or a penny for this side. For this side, you need a penny cut with a uh, notch cut in it or the hinder armors tool. Uh, then you'll need a, um, a hex head for both the uh, lock bar stabilizer disc uh, and if you really want to take it apart for the uh, lock bar insert. You're also going to need a small hex head for these scale screws right here. And then you're going to need a Torx head for the, um, <laughs> for the screws back here. So you need a lot of tools if you want to take this guy yeah. apart. And that's kind of silly, but I don't know. I mean, he's staying uh, traditional in terms of the pivot. And the handle screws, those are traditional, you know, I mean, that's, that's what we're looking at there. And so are the pocket clip screws, you know, and actually, if I'm being honest, the, I believe the XM18 does not use Torx head screws. It use, it uses a hex head screw and these are Torx head. So these are traditional looking in terms of the finish, but it's a non-traditional setup here, or maybe it's more the Eclipse style. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of different heads on this knife and that's, that's okay. It's a few extra steps you have to take, but it's not a big deal. Um, I don't know. You know what? This is the longest I've gone without <laughs> asking you any questions. It Ricky's is. Ask me a supercharged question. Right. I'll try to answer. <laughs> Ricky has been kind enough to sit in here and hand me my XM18 multiple times and not say anything. What are your impressions of this knife? Any and all? Um, any and all thoughts. Uh, I never looked at the dimensions when I saw it online. I just saw all the pictures mm -hmm. and in the pictures, it still looks like it's a pretty big knife. Uh, it's tiny. <laughs> like, I was really blown away with how small it is, but at the same time, it's like, feels like it would be weirdly user friendly. I agree. I agree. Um, what do you think of the general aesthetics? I think it looks awesome. I really like how this, uh, the G10 scale doesn't cover the whole thing. I like how you still see some of the titanium there. Mm -hmm. And I think you could make it look pretty cool if you wanted to. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, if you, um, you know, and there there are modular parts available for these. You can get different pivot screws, different scales, and, and uh, different colored pocket clips, blah, blah, blah. But the nice thing is, is if you decide to go with one of the versions with an anodized frame, like blue or bronze, then you get the contrast between the frame and the scale, even looking directly at it. Uh, like this, you don't have to turn it this way to see it because they are uh, shadow boxed. Um, so that's pretty neat. I, I like that as well. Um, now, 
Uh, how do you like this versus other small knives that you've handled? Would you say that if if uh, if the cost were were not an issue um, at all or nothing to consider, I guess I should say, would you pick this one up over other small knives you've handled? Definitely, because really the pair of three is still quite a bit bigger, isn't it? Yeah, and that's one of the only other smaller knives I've handled that aren't like the cheap three dollar gas station knives. Yeah, uh, I think it feels incredible. Yeah. I agree. I would totally use it. Cool. Well, we're coming up at that point where my camera is going to try and cut out. So I'm going to try and get this in really quick. Um, I'm on Instagram now. I am new to Instagram. I'm metal underscore complex. If you'd like to check out my Instagram and follow me, it's just pictures right now. I'm not even good at the hashtag thing, but I'm on there. So if you want to check me out, you can. I've got the same logo and everything. Also, I have something pre-ordered that is shipping here and will be here tomorrow or Thursday. I am hoping to be the first in the world to upload anything on it. If you guys are on the up and up in the knife world, you probably know what it is. I'm not going to leave any hints. You are welcome to guess about it in the comment section, but I probably won't reply to you. Uh, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like. Um, and if you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So please check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. And keep an eye out for that upload uh, because it'll be uh, Wednesday, Thursday this week where that happens. So thanks again for watching, guys, and have a great day.